Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday morning service here in our beautiful sanctuary or at home, online, wherever you may be. We're so grateful that you're here. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, One with the One. Good morning to all of you here in the sanctuary. So good to see you. Good morning to everyone at home on Facebook and Zoom. Uh, this is the time here in the sanctuary where you won't want to go into silence. So while I know your phones are already off, this would be a good time to just check it. Okay, and so we're ready. Let's let us join together in prayer. Yes, let's know that God is all there is. We can never be separate from God. God is love. God is joy, God is peace, God is nature. There isn't anywhere. God is above, below, behind, around. We cannot escape God. We know this. And I know this for myself. I know that God guides me, directs me, does everything for me when I choose to listen, so I do. And because I listen and I know I can speak my word right now for all of us here and for all of us at home, for all of us everywhere, knowing that God is within us. God is our abundance, God is our creativity, God is our health, God is service, God is in all of our relationships. There isn't anywhere in us, God is at the depths of everything that we are. It is the one place that has never been touched by anything other than love and goodness and greatness. And so we say yes to God. And because I know that this is all of our truths here today, I know that this is the truth. I'm so grateful for the volunteers. I'm so grateful for our music. I'm so grateful to be guided by the divine wisdom of Reverend Sidney. And we all do this, and we take it with us, and we live it. And so because this is the truth, and I'm always and continually aware of this truth and this knowing, I say thank you, thank you, thank you, God. I release my word into this perfect law, knowing it is so. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a of God, you are the face of God, I hold you in my heart, you are a part of me, you are the face of God.
please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, honor as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing for our congregational song, Amazing Grace. We're going to meditate for the next five minutes. I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. If your mind wanders, just bring it back to silently repeating, God's the love that I am. And I'll bring us out of the meditation in five minutes.
was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king. Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to the kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from your lips she drew the hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say I took the name in vain, but I don't even know the name. And if I did, what really is that to you? There's a blaze of light in every word. It doesn't matter what you heard. did my best, it wasn't much, I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch, I told the truth, I didn't come to fool you, and even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of song, with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah, hallelujah. morning. How are you? Great. Are you feeling hallelujah? Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm so glad. I am Reverend Sydney. I'm the assistant minister here at the North Hollywood Church. Um, some of you might not know that I had my practitioner training here many years ago and then we moved away. Then we came back. That's a big hallelujah right there. And so I'm very happy that I get to be here again. It's, um, it's home. Uh, before I get into my talk, I want to talk, I want to uh, cover something first. Um, a week ago yesterday, there was a shooting in Buffalo, and people were killed. 
because of the color of their skin. A white supremacist, an angry young white man with a gun, decided he was going to do his part to raise that particular flag. So I just want to read to you the statement from Centers for Spiritual Living. So if there's any doubt in your mind about where we stand, where we stand when it comes to the diversity, the inclusion, and the welcoming, welcoming and welcomeness that we have in a community, in this community, I want to make sure that you all know. So the people of Centers for Spiritual Living stand with the people of Buffalo, New York. At a grocery store in a predominantly black neighborhood, an 18-year-old white gunman shot 13 people on Saturday, killing 10 and wounding three. We stand with those who are suffering loss today who feel targeted and unsafe. We stand with those who are grieving this loss of life and our hearts are with the family and loved ones of the victims, not only of this tragedy, but from wherever gun violence results in death. We are deeply saddened by this violent act and by the racial hate that motivates and perpetuates crimes against people of color. Racially motivated hate crimes or acts of violent extremism harm us all. The false narrative that creates fear of a certain group of people and dehumanizes them has led to violence. This stands in direct contradiction to the principles of CSL. We believe that in our spiritual oneness there is unique value that comes from diversity. We treasure this diversity and the benefits all of us receive from it. The muck and the mire is not the truth of who you and I are. The muck and the mire, the mud, is not the truth. So I just want everyone to know that as we move into my message today so that we can stand with that knowing of truth, that knowing of wholeness that we will not back away from. We will not ever stand for anything less than full love, full acceptance, full compassion and openness for people of all walks wherever anybody is on the gender spectrum, the race spectrum, the religious spectrum, the age spectrum, the cultural spectrum, it matters not. We know that we are one. We know that we are one. Okay, so now I want to say something else, and that's that in 1631, a thousand Bibles were published with a misprint. They're called the Wicked Bibles. Now, only about 10 or 20 of them remain today. But if you had been paying attention in 1631 and got one of these, you would notice that in the, one of the Ten Commandments, the word not was omitted. <laughs> So in 1631, those who were paying attention read, thou shalt commit adultery. <laughs> that has nothing to do with my talk. All right. <laughs> I just thought it was awesome though. Okay, so last week, a bunch of us spent some time here in the sanctuary after church with one of our members, Bess Fanning, who talked to us about California's climate challenges and the solutions the solutions, and it was a really inspiring, incredible time because we did not spend all of the time on the challenges and the problems, we looked at the solutions. And that gave everyone in the room a, a sense of possibility. And that's the key about what I wanna to talk to you today about the an infinite mind, the power and presence of God as our partner, as our co-creator, as that which informs us, divines us, defines us, it is that place of infinite possibility and pure potentiality. This is the mind of wholeness. It is the mind of solution, yes, to every question, every problem. Now, in the Course of Miracles, we read that the moment a question arises, the solution is already there within it. It's already fully there within it. And that's really important to know because we are dealing with infinite power and presence, not big dummy in the sky. Our job is to turn to God, to turn within, and to become willing to know a greater truth, to know that as we 
realize that we are worthy of the greater truth, that we vibrate along with it, that we are aligned with it, that we get to participate with that, to be guided by it, and yes, to be the answer to the problem. So when our entire mindset is on what's wrong or how bad something is, how others have, what others have done, whether or not it's the fault of this person, that person, that corporation, that world leader, whatever it is, we miss the whole point. We really, really do. And why I, I read this earlier passage from CSL is because I want us to remember, I need to remember that we stand in solution, that we stand in wholeness, that we stand in a place of constantly reminding ourselves and remembering to remember to remember that we are divine, that we are spiritual beings living in a spiritual universe governed by spiritual laws. Therefore, we have agency. We have ability. We can move those mountains. We can move those mountains. In any situation, or conflict, or challenge in life, we always have the choice to dwell in that problem, the mud, the muck, and the mire, or to rise up to the divine and inspired mindset of healing and solution. We get to choose that. We get to choose that. You know, Einstein taught that problems are solved at the level of solution, not at the level of problem. It's really important to remember that. We have the ability to rise up. Now I'll admit it's a lot more entertaining and a lot more engaging to stay at the level of, of complaining and whining and gossip and snarkasm, as I like to say. It's a lot more fun, right? Um, but that's what distracts us. It distracts us from truth. It distracts us and it allows us to stay in a level of procrastination that keeps us from remembering our divinity. It's, um, it's disempowering to be in that place, but the payoff too is that we don't have to take responsibility. We don't have to take action. We get to stay in that place of being victims and believing that something out there is either against us or for us, depending on the weather or what's going on. So, when we argue for our limitations, you know, we get a lot of satisfaction. Um, and that's because there's no risk involved. There's no risk. Or as I like to say, I remember when, when my husband and I first joined a, a gym together and, and I wasn't going very often. He said, well, aren't you going to be doing this? And I said, hey, you know, no pain, no pain. <laughs> On the other hand, no pain, no gain. Now, we don't have to be living in a world of pain. We get to choose. Um, we can choose to learn and grow through love or through pain. Unfortunately, we tend to choose that pain because it does get our attention, you know, that we do seem to attend more to the stuff that rattles our cages. Uh, and somehow we tend to think that doing deep spiritual work is somehow going to be worse than staying in this place of, of regret, um, shame, the muck, the mire. You know, there's no risk there. There's no growth. There's no discovery and certainly no challenge to our fragile and very important egos. You know, so we stay there. It's, it just seems like it's easier. And yet it's so painful. It's comfortably painful, which is a weird thing to think about. It's the root of neuroses and, dis and um, dysfunction. It's the root of codependency. When we find something that's so familiar and we stay in it because they know us there, it hurts like hell, but we stay there. So. When we believe that we're helpless and we're impotent, um, it allows us to go back to the safety and comfort of the old God paradigm. Anybody grow up with the old God paradigm, right? Um, the old God paradigm is the God that a lot of us grew up with, the one who hates us. And yet we beg, we plead, make promises, thinking that maybe, just maybe, that old God's gonna show up and take pity on us and will rescue us. Please save me, save me. And it seems sometimes that no matter how well we in New Thought have exorcised old God, he still keeps trying to come back and re-audition for the job, right? Because we teach a God of presence, of power, of love, that, that presence in which there is no absence. So just to refresh, old God, which I call God 1.0, Old Testament God, um, 
is moody, hormonal, passive aggressive, white guy, right? Long beard, sits on a cloud, keeps score, has big anxiety issues, and clearly has fallen off his meds. So, keeping him around, though, has some benefits. So, with God 1.0, I think they rolled him out way too soon. They should have done a lot more beta testing on him because he did not mark it well, he did not skew well, and, and did not, just did not have a lot of appeal. So then God 2.0 was introduced. Now God 2.0 is New Testament God. Um, better, but there's still quite a few issues in, in the mobile app for 2.0 and that not everybody has access. And most of the time, those third-party servers, the ones that you have to go through to get to God, they're really hard to work with. They want to sacrifice. They want you to do penance. And don't even get me started on how they feel about women in leadership roles. Okay, so 2.0 isn't really working for me either. So the God I work with is God 3.0. This is the God of pure presence, pure love, and always seeking to create and express in a higher way, a joyful way through its creations. And that means you and me, all right? That's you and me. So in the Sermon on the Mount, in the book of Matthew, and this is where we come back to the Bible, this is 2.0, but, but very valid. Um, Jesus gave a lot of parables, Jesus the teacher. Now, the mount, metaphysically, the mountain means going up to the higher place where you can have a greater understanding, a greater awareness, a higher knowing of truth. Begin to see yourself from that higher perspective. That's why we go to the mountain. We go to the mountain because it takes us above. It takes us above that stuff that's down here. It means that we, when, we, um, when we do that, we are elevating our thoughts and our aspirations to the spiritual viewpoint. It's the Einstein mind. It's the level of solution, the level of infinite possibility. And when we know this, when we know this, we get to access that, right? We get to access that level of possibility. Now, my talk today is titled Pearls and Pigs. Pearls and Pigs. And from that Sermon on the Mount, this is what is reported to have been said by Jesus. Do not give that which is holy to dogs or throw your pearls before pigs, for they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Okay, well, and we've heard it as don't cast your pearls before swine. And that always sounded really judgy to me. It's like you're deciding that my gifts and my talents, I'm not going to show them to you or you because you just don't seem good enough. You're swine. You're swine. So that's not what this is about. That's not what this is about. Although I will say that years ago I bought a, a, a wooden sign and I put it in my home office. It says, never try to teach a pig to sing. It wastes your time and annoys the pig. And the truth is, when we recognize that we are the divine, we are the divine, if we spend time not recognizing that, not drawing from the infinite power and presence that we are, not spending time communing with the higher idea of who we are, that mind of solution, that higher plane of thinking, then we are actually casting our pearls, that pearl of great price, our spiritual identity, before the swine of mud, the swine of the muck, the, the world of form the world of form, which will tell us there isn't solution. It will tell us that there isn't an answer. But there are a lot of people and a lot of, a lot of things which will conspire to pull us into that place of struggle, into that place of suffering, into that place of mud, into that place of arguing, of judging, judging of gossiping, and not remembering that you and I, each of us, we are pearls of God. We are pearls of God. We are the jewel of God. We are how God expresses. So that Jesus was teaching us that God is that presence which is greater than all situations, greater than con any conclusions, fears, judgments, assessments, or newscasts. Jesus was offering a prescription for calm, grounded, centered, non-reactive living. 
in which we trust that no matter how chaotic or uncertain things are, we're going to be okay. It's teaching to have a quiet mind and silence the voices that can run wild in our heads. Now, I know that we all have those voices. I call mine the 3 a.m. team because they do want to show up at about 3 a.m. and start talking to me and convincing me that I need to doubt this or this or that thing over there isn't working or this person over there. So we all have our 3 a.m. team, the committee. But when we work from that quiet mind, that pearl, that clear pearl of who and what we are, the 3 a.m. team has no sway. You know, it, why is this so crucial, though? Because it's, it's easy to spend or more accurately waste an extraordinary amount of time on things we can't control. And there are things we can't control. However, there are things we can control, and that's our thought. We get to control our thought. We get to choose who to know, who to know we are how to know what we are in this world. We get to choose whether we're going to react to something or respond from the Einstein level of solution. You know, worry is lethal because it's, it's a failure to be fully present. It's a failure to be fully present. And worrying about something means that you're there, not here. And all the power in the universe is right here in this present moment. Yet if we move ourselves over here to the future or over there to the past, we have disempowered ourselves. We have disconnected from the truth of our being. We have disconnected from the power and presence that is seeking to create through us and to shine through us. So Jesus is teaching us to be fully present in this moment, this here and now moment, so that we can respond in love instead of reacting in fear. We can respond in peace instead of reacting in judgment. We can respond in wholeness instead of fearing for our lives and fearing for the planet. We want to respond in wisdom and love. When we trust and cultivate our spiritual lives and our awareness, we move from fear to faith. And faith is that conviction. It's not wishful thinking. Faith is the conviction that God is fully present and active right here, right now, through us, as us, and that we are partnered with that presence. Ah. You know, we, if we can move from trying to manipulate and control people and things and circumstances and move into that place of knowing that we are in charge of our own thinking, we actually move to that higher, the highest place of peace, which is surrender. Now, surrender gets a bad name. But I was talking with my husband about this, who works a lot with people in recovery. And he likes to think of it this way. Surrender isn't giving up, it's opening up. Surrender is opening up. It's opening up to the truth of who we are. So if we want to throw away our pearls, you know, squander our precious life, our talents, and our energy and imagination on all of those activities and habits and things that distract us, we can certainly do that. And we can certainly focus on the news. We can certainly focus on the problems. We can certainly focus on all of that. And what I'm suggesting is that we have the ability to acknowledge that we have work to do. We have work to do. We have, hmm, we have some stuff to heal. Would you agree with that? We've got some work to do. When we grow our consciousness of God, our awareness of this divine presence, we bless the world. We bless the world. And it is so much more powerful than cursing the world and cursing the darkness, right? It, it can feel really scary to uncover the beliefs that we have going on. It can feel kind of scary because you're, sometimes we, we don't know what's going to be in there. And I think sometimes we rationalize it. It's like saying, well, I'm lost, but I'm making really good time. You know, <laughs> and so we want to make sure that we're not lost. Or if we're lost, we're saying, well, isn't that interesting? I'm lost. I need to look for guidance. I need to turn within to that presence, which is seeking to love me into a higher way of expressing, which is seeking to express in this world as love, as truth, as peace. You know, when we start out on the spiritual path, um, 
I think a lot of us imagine God as just being a larger version of ourselves, right? And Emmett Fox says that if an insect were to think of God or try to imagine what God is, like a bigger idea, um, God would probably just think about God, uh, rather the insect is going to think about God just being a really, really big, huge insect. And that's creating God in our image. And what's interesting, too, is that in the Old Testament, God 1.0, man created God in his image. So we had the human divine. We moved into second, the New, the New Testament, God 2.0, and now we are looking at God creating man, woman, life in its image, right? So we've moved from the human divine to the divine human. And now where we are, where I'm saying, is that we are ready now to realize, to recognize, and to birth ourselves as the divine divine. The divine, the divine, the divine. We are individualizations of God. We are that individualized expression. You and I are the presence of God at the point where we are. You are the presence of God at the point where you are. You are the presence of God at the point where you are. All of us right here are that. You know, think of yourself like a light bulb, right? The electrical current is always present. But until we turn that light on, it's not going to shine. Another way of thinking about this is like, well, Sam plays piano. And he's really, really good. And his fingers do that work for him. They are in service to him. Now, they don't work of their own volition. You know, the fingers aren't having to think, well, I'm going to move here. I'm going to strike this key. I'm going to strike that one harder. I'm going to strike this one over here. None of that happens. They are directed by Sam, and they play by means of him. You and I are here by means of God, and God is expressing by means of us. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Do we, are we willing to know that for ourselves? Are we willing to know it about everybody else? Are we willing to know that? I am the means by which God expresses. Say that. I am the means by which God expresses. Let's do it again. I am the means by which God expresses. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to express from that higher level? Are you willing to know that? Are you willing to say it daily? You know, think of yourself as a conduit a channel. You're the faucet. God's the water. You and I are the faucet. God is the water. Spirit is the water. It longs to come through us. So Ralph Waldo Emerson told us that what lies behind us, what lies in front of us, pales in comparison to what lies inside you. So you and I are the pearls of God. The luster shining within you is your divine nature, your Christ-like. And when we anchor in a place of knowing that, we become, we have that capacity to express as infinite possibility. And that's what is meant by not casting our pearls before swine. You know, we don't want to waste this gift of magnificence by dwelling in the darkness. We want to shine our light. We want to listen for that wisdom. We want to bless life. We want to bless the people around us. We want to heal these situations. You know, in the 13th and 14th century, there was this guy, Meister Eckhart, who was a mystic. And because he said what he said, he was excommunicated from the church. And the big thing he said was, all God wants is to be God in you. That's it. That's all God wants, is to be God in you. Ernest Holmes said, you are living in an intelligence which instantly knows the answer to any problem. You are living in an intelligence which has no problem. What if we were to know ourselves as living as that intelligence, as that intelligence? You know, we bring our cha challenges to this principle which has no problem, and immediately solution is brought. Immediately wisdom is brought. You know, just as gravity has no problem, electricity has no problem, God has no problem. So when we move up to that higher level and to listen and to practice, practice communing with God. This is why spiritual practice is something that we talk about so much. When we do this, we remember that we are open, clear conduits. We are that faucet for God. So we can choose to bring our problems, whether they're about the climate, 
leaders invading other countries, or angry young white teenagers seeking to create a neo-racist society to the mind of God within each and every one of us, knowing that it functions at the level of solution, and it lifts us up to that. Because the mind of God is wholeness, and this wholeness is ever seeking to express as greater wholeness. Now, when we see these challenges, we can look at them and say, this is a big problem. And we can also turn to another way of thinking about it, which is that these are evolutionary triggers. That we, by right of consciousness, have been brought here, brought here at this time and place to be open and receptive because we have evolved to be partners with God in this time and place. These are evolutionary triggers which are going to inspire us to grow, to get bigger, to allow a greater flow of God, that's what we get to do. So we can either back away from them or we can say, this is my inspiration to grow. We can say, I'm going to live at the level of trigger or I am going to grow. I am going to grow. I'm going to find a solution. I'm going to live at solution. I'm going to live in love. You know, our universe is calling for a radical shift in our collective knowing. <sighs> And I believe that that shift is that we are here to let God be God in each of us. This is the level of holy and sacred solution. And this is what it means to no longer cast our pearls before the swine of indifference, hopelessness, helplessness, failure, or fear. You know, today is the day. I invite you to say that today is the day that we each wake up to our own magnificence that we acknowledge it, that we live from it, no longer defined by the world or the problems that it throws at us or appears to show to us, but we are divined by God. We are divined by the divine itself. So as we wake up to this magnificence that we are, we can choose this day to let God be God in each of us, each of us, here and now. Let's do this. Are you with me? All right, let's do it. Let's pray. Thank you. <sighs> we turn within to that light, to the luster of who and what we are. Knowing, knowing that the presence of God is never in absence. That we are the center for the divine operation of life itself. And that nothing other than our own limitation of belief can stand in the way of that. But we are the expression of God. We are the divine. We are one with and one of God. And so I know for each of us that there is an opening. There is a shift. There is a willingness to know ourselves now as God knows us. To let God be God in us. To, be, to let love be love in us. To let peace be peace in us. To let it guide us into those ways that we might heal our own beliefs, our own ideas, our own limited thinking, so that we might be the light in the world, that we might be the conduit for peace, the conduit for love, the conduit for joy, for possibility, for solution. It's so, it's so wonderful to know that we are the infinite in expression. So I know for each of us that we, we say yes to that. We say yes to being that infinite. We say yes to expressing that, to knowing it, to recognizing it in ourselves and in each other so that this world may be lifted up and the light may shine. I know that this church is a place of wonder, magnificence, and possibility and celebration. And I know that each person who is in this room and each person who is watching online knows that as well and that together we are the light of God. So we bless this church. We bless all churches everywhere, all temples, all ashrams, all mosques, all synagogues, all places in which people gather knowing that God has primacy, spirit has primacy, it is infinite, limitless, peace. And as we know this for ourselves, we know it for the rest of the world. And we particularly wrap our spiritual, our metaphysical, our loving arms, 
around Ukraine and around Russia, knowing that we are willing to bless. And in that blessing, we are calling forth a higher level and experience of the divine for each and every being on this planet. We surround the people of Buffalo with love, with peace. We surround anyone who might be in need of greater love. And we know that anyone who might be in our mind who is calling for greater love is right here and right now, immersed, saturated with God. So I am grateful. I am so grateful. And I release this word into the law, knowing that it is always active, always receptive, and that we have truly, truly made that shift within ourselves and therefore in the world, and it is good, it is very good. So I say, and so it is, and together we say, amen. And we'll sing this one time. I am so In this partnering with God, we take the idea and the knowing of our offering, of our love that we give, of our tithes, and we hold them in our hand and hold them to our heart. And I invite you to say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal, bless, and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Amen.
Well, I would like to swing on a star, but I'd like to wear my pearls while I'm doing it. All right. So, how about Susan over there? Yeah. All right. Well, you can find all of her stuff at Susan, K K A Y, Wyatt with two T's, author.com. You can also find her music on iTunes. So, if this is your first time at our church, we are delighted you are here. Please stop by the welcome table on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. We make it easy for you to make donations to our church. The text to give is inside your program and a QR code is on the back or go to nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom. Wednesday evening service is May 25th. Meditation starts at 6.50 and the service is at 7 p.m. Join Reverend Sydney this week as she shares on the topic, Spiritual Overdraft Protection. Grief Support Group. This group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, meets today at 1 p.m. on Zoom. Japan Trip with Dr. Mark, October 2022. Join Dr. Mark for the spiritual adventure of a lifetime. For details and sign up, visit our website today. All right, don't miss this. We have a new class. Our remarkable Dr. Mark is presenting a remarkable six-week class based on the teachings of a remarkable woman. Sounds remarkable, yes? <laughs> Emma Curtis Hopkins was and is one of the most profound New Thought icons. Her book, Scientific Christian Mental Practice, establishes an absolute and powerful foundation for healing and wholeness in every area of your life. Join Dr. Mark for Scientific Christian Mental Practice Part 1. Ooh, there's a part two. Mondays beginning June 6th, 6.30 to 8 p.m. on Zoom only. Cost is $150. Sign up on our website and get the book in our bookstore or online. Ooh, save the date for our 2022 Memorial Day Sunday celebration. Next Sunday, May 29th at our 11.30 a.m. service, offered in person and on Zoom, we will remember, invite our members to recommit, renew, invite practitioners to recommit, rewire, install Reverend... <laughs> She had to say something. <laughs> install, <laughs> <laughs> install Reverend Dr. Sidney Lehman Steen as our assistant minister. And, woo! Yeah, yeah, give it up. And then refire afterwards with a delicious barbecue and party for kids and adults. If you are a loved one, could use some enhanced spiritual support, we have a pastoral care team ready to help. Please reach out to our team through our website. Zoom virtual patio, before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation, every morning, Monday through Saturday, from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links, and more information about all our events and sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Please rise as we join in the peace song. <laughs>
Repeat after me. I am at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Let's go get some coffee. <laughs> Thank you.